This is Nick with LogosByNick.com, and in today's tutorial, I'll be demonstrating how to create this pie chart infographic using Inkscape. And at any point in this tutorial, you could look down at the bottom left-hand side of my screen to see which mouse clicks and keystrokes I'm using. So we'll close out of that and get started. The first thing in Inkscape that we will do is set the view to custom, and then zoom in at 100%. View, zoom, and zoom at one-to-one. -one. We'll open our Align and Distribute menu with this button right here. We're going to want last selected chosen from that drop down, and then we'll open up our edit objects, colors, gradients, and stroke menu. So the first thing I'm going to do in Inkscape is create a circle. So let's click on the circle and ellipses tool. Let's hold control and shift on the keyboard and click and drag on the canvas to create a perfectly round circle like that, maybe about that big. And I'm going to turn the opacity on that down a little bit. I'm going to drop that about in half just so we can see through it. And then we'll come over to the squares and rectangles tool. And let's create a rectangle going through this thing, maybe about that thick. That's pretty good. Maybe about that size, that's pretty good. We'll go back to the uh, Select tool, and let's bring this over here. And I'm going to turn that red, and then I'll right-click that and go to Duplicate, turn that green. Then I'm going to click and drag over that entire selection right there. And I'm going to come down to the uh, Distribute panel, and I'm going to click this one that says Align top edges of objects to the bottom edge of the anchor. Go ahead and click that. It's going to stack them up on top of each other and I'll group it together with this button right here. So what I'll do next is I'll hold shift and click on the circle and then center it on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis and then hold shift and click on that circle to deselect it. So we just have these two selected and then we'll ungroup them and then hold shift and click on the green rectangle to deselect that so we just have this red rectangle selected and then we can go ahead and press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to roll roll upwards on the mouse wheel so I can see this a little better. I'm going to click on this green rectangle and we have the scaling handles around the edges here. I'm going to click this a second time to get the rotation handles and when you do that there should be a little crosshair that appears in the middle there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and I'm going to click and drag that crosshair all the way to the bottom and it should snap onto the bottom there once it gets down there just like that. Leave it there and let me go up here roll upwards on the mouse wheel and I'm, I'm going to hold control and I'm going to grab this arrow right here and click and drag it and you'll see we'll be able to rotate this thing around. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave it right here and while I'm still holding control and the click I'm going to press the space bar to make a copy and I'm going to bring this copy down here bring it to about right there and then press the space bar again to make another copy. We're holding control and the left uh, the left click on the mouse the whole time. I'm going to bring this copy right here and I'm just going to let go and leave that there. And then I'll hold shift on the keyboard, click on that green segment and then that green segment so we have all three green se uh, segments selected and go to path union. And then I'll hold shift on the keyboard and click on that circle and then go to path difference. So we end up with this little uh, almost kind of like a peace sign sort of shape. And once we've done that we can go to the create uh, rectangles and squares tool. And I'm going to draw a square going over this thing. So I'm going to start up at the top left over here with the mouse cursor and then I'm going to hold control and just click and drag downwards so it creates a nice symmetrical square. Maybe about that size. And once you do that there should be this little circle node on the top right Let's just click and drag that down a little bit to give that a rounded edge. Make the, uh, we're going to make the edges of this square rounded. And then we'll convert that to a path to finalize it at that shape. So we'll go to path, stroke to path. And then we'll go back to the select tool. And let's lower that one step, this button right here, lower selection one step. So that puts that beneath the circle. And then hold shift and click on that circle. And we'll make sure that's centered up on the vertical axis and the horizontal axis. And then let's click on this again to get our rotation handles. And I'm going to hold control on the keyboard and grab this top left corner and just rotate this around until it's going at a perfect 90 degree angle where the corners are going perfectly up and down like that. And then we can click it again to get back to our scaling handles. And I'm going to take this bottom arrow right here and I'm just going to click and drag this up. Maybe, uh, maybe about that much. I'm just going to click and drag this back into view. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. 
Now the next thing we want to do is we want to break, we want to take this little circle and break this up into three separate pieces. So we'll go to path and break apart. And then we will right click this and go to duplicate. And then hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this little portion of shapes up to about here, above where the green corner is, right above there. That's pretty good. And then once you get it there, you just click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And let's click on this black shape right here, this one right there. If you want to zoom in, you can press plus and minus on the keyboard. That one, and then hold shift and click on this top one up here. And then we'll bring the opacity of those all the way up. And we're going to make those a shade of red. And then I'm going to hold shift on the keyboard and click on this top red segment to deselect it. So we just have this bottom one selected. And I'll come over here to the Fill tab, and under the HSL tab, I'll go to the L column, and I'm going to slide this to the left a little bit to darken that up. I'm going to make that slightly darker than the, than the uh, object on top of it, the other red one. And then we'll go to our Bezier pen. Let's turn on our Snap to Cusp nodes. Click on that. And then we'll snap the, uh, the cursor onto this left corner right here, and then click and then bring the cursor and snap it onto the left corner of that one right there and click. And then bring the line over here, snap it onto that corner and click. I'm going to zoom in so you can see what I'm doing. And then I'm going to take the cursor and snap it onto this corner and click. And then bring it all back to the starting point. And once it connects to the starting point, go ahead and click. And that should draw a shape going around those corners that we just selected. And we can go back to our select tool and then hold shift and click on that darker red object right there. And let's unify that together by going to path union. Okay, so the next thing we will do is I'm going to press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100%. I'm going to click on this black shape right here to the left. And then I'll hold shift and click on this black shape right here to the left that's on the bottom. And I'll bring the opacity on those all the way up. And I'm going to come down here to my color picker. I'm going to choose a uh, like a bluish, a bluish greenish shade, maybe like that. And then I'll hold shift and click on this top green piece to deselect that. So we just have this bottom one selected. And again, I'll darken this one up by coming over to the L column over here, slide that to the left a little bit. And we'll go back to our Bezier pen. And this time we're going to leave the snap to cusp nodes on. We're also going to turn on the snap to paths for this one as well. So I'm going to press plus on the keyboard to zoom in a little bit. And if you want to pan your page around, you can press down on the mouse wheel and move the mouse, and that'll help you. That'll let you move the page around so you can see what you're doing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to snap to this corner right here on the right, and then click. And then I'll bring it up to this corner right here. Once it snaps, go ahead and click. And then I'm going to bring this somewhere about in the middle right here, and then click. And then bring this all the way to the left edge until it snaps onto the left edge, and then click. And once you do that, hold control and bring this line straight down so it snaps onto the left edge of the one down here. And once it snaps, go ahead and click, and then we can let go of control and bring the line back to the starting point. And then click, and that should make that shape going over it. And we'll go back to our select tool. We'll hold shift in the keyboard and click on that dark green shape down there. And we'll unify that together by going to path, union. We have to do that one more time for this side over here. We'll click on this top black shape, hold shift, click on that top black shape, bring the opacity all the way up. And I'm going to give these a shade of yellow, maybe this shade over here. And then I'll hold shift and click on this top object to deselect that. So I just have this bottom one selected. And I'll come over here to the, to the, uh, the L column. I'm going to slide this over to the left to darken that up. And then let's go to our Bezier pen. We'll start at this corner of the yellow object right here and click. And we're going to bring the line down to the corner of this darker yellow object, but we can't see it because it's beneath the green object. So just move the, uh, move the cursor around until it snaps onto it. Oh, you know what? We're going to have to turn off the snap to paths first. Otherwise, it'll snap to all the edges. We want it to just snap to the corner. So let's turn that off. And let's see. Once it, once it finds the corner of that object, it'll snap. So there it is right there. Go ahead and click. And then we can come back here and turn the snap to pads back on because we're going to need that now. We're going to bring this line over here to the right edge and then click and then hold control and bring this line straight up until it snaps onto the edge of that and then click. And we can let go of control, bring it back to the starting point and there's our shape. So what we could do now is go back to our select tool, hold shift in the keyboard, click on the dark yellow piece. 
And let's unify them together by going to path, union. And what we will do now is we're going to turn off our snap to cusp nodes and turn off the snap to paths. And what we could do now is let's click on this green object right here and then hold shift and click on the green object beneath it so we have them both selected. And we're going to go to our edit paths by nodes tool. Go ahead and click on that. And there's going to be all these little nodes that show up here when we do that. And we're going to select all of these nodes except for the bottom, the bottom ones down here. So I'm going to select these up here and they'll be highlighted once they're selected. Then I'm going to hold shift and click and drag over this one so I can select that one too. Holding shift the whole time, I'm going to click and drag over that one and then that one. So we have all of those selected. And with all of those selected, we can hold control on the keyboard and click and drag one of them down so they all come down about that much. And we want to really flatten this thing out, maybe about, maybe about that much. That's pretty good. Then we can go back to our select tool and let's click on that yellow shape and then hold shift and click on the dark yellow shape so we have both of them selected. And we'll go to the edit paths by nodes tool. And again, we're going to select all of the nodes except for these ones down here on the bottom and this bottom corner one. So we're going to select all of them except for those. So let's just click and drag over this entire portion up here and select those. And we have all of those selected. We just need to select this one too. So I'm going to hold shift and click and drag around that so we have that selected. And once you've done that, you can just hold control and click and pick one of those nodes and just click and drag it down. We'll drag this one down maybe this much, maybe about that far. And that's, that's pretty good. We can go back to our select tool. Let's press one on the keyboard to zoom back out to 100% and you get a better uh, snapshot of what we're doing here. Now let's click on this green, this green um, surface that the object is sitting on. Let's bring the opacity of that all the way up. Let's make that a light shade of gray. And then we'll right click this and go to duplicate. And we're going to make that slightly darker by coming back to the L column and sliding that to the left a little bit. And then we'll hold control on the keyboard and click and drag this down, maybe about that much. And then we'll lower this to the bottom with this button right here, lower selection to the bottom. So it goes beneath everything. And then let's, gla let's grab um, our zoom tool and let's zoom in over this left edge right here. And then we'll go back to our, um, our Bezier pen. We'll turn our snap to pads back on and we're going to snap the cursor onto the left edge of this object and then click and then hold control and bring that line straight up until it snaps onto that edge and then click and then we're going to come straight across. So I'm actually going to zoom out to do this. I'm going to press minus on the keyboard to zoom out so I can see the whole thing. Pressing down on the mouse wheel and moving the mouse around so I can pan the page. And once I'm positioned how I like it, I'm just going to hold control and continue bringing this line straight across until it snaps to the edge and then click. And while still holding control, I'm going to bring it down to the left edge of this one and then click. And then we can let go of control and bring this back to the starting point, connect it all back together. And let's go back to our select tool, hold shift in the keyboard and click on the darker gray uh, squared uh, diamond shape rather. So we have them both selected and go to path union. So it kind of looks like it's sitting on a, a beveled surface, I guess you can call it. And what we could do now is let's turn, um, let's turn the snap the pads off. Let's press one on the keyboard to zoom back out. Let's click and drag over this entire thing and group it together with this button right here. Group selected objects. And then we could hold control and shift and scale this down a little bit. We don't need it to be that big for what we're about to do next. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to put this on a standard eight, uh, eight and a half by 11 inch sheet, uh, but horizontally oriented. So I'm going to grab the rectangle tool and click on that. I'm just going to click and drag on the canvas to create a rectangle. Don't worry about the, the, the uh, size of it. We're going to straighten that out now. But since we previously made a rounded uh, rectangle, it's going to make, make it rounded by default. So we could just click on this button up here to make the corner sharp again, just like that. And we'll go to the uh, select tool and up here where it says W, whatever that number is in there, let's erase that and let's put uh, 990 and then hit tab so it skips over to the height by 665. And then we'll lower this to the bottom. And I'm going to make this slightly lighter. Actually, no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to the color picker and I'm going to choose a light, dull shade of... Um, Maybe like a light blue, like a grayish type of blue like that. And then I'll hold shift and click on the object and center it on 
the vertical axis and the horizontal axis, so it's all centered up on that page right there. And then we could hold shift and click on our little background to deselect that. And let's ungroup this now. We can ungroup that, click off of it to deselect. And I'm going to click on this lighter gray object right here. And I'm going to turn that white so it's, it could appear better. Yeah, like that. And I'll click on the darker gray object and I'll make that a little lighter as well. So it you know, pops off the page a little more. And then I'll hold shift and click on the white object so we have both of those selected and go to a right click, duplicate. And we'll unify those together. We'll go to path, union. We'll turn that black. And then I'll hold control and click and drag this down just a little bit, maybe about that much. And I'll, and I'll lower this down a few times. This button right here, lower selection one step. Lower that a few times until it goes beneath the entire graphic like that. So it's kind of giving it like a little bit of a shadow. And I'll take the opacity and bring that down a fair amount, maybe about that much. That looks pretty good, about 24% uh, for the opacity. And then uh, I can click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And let's add some text up here. I'm just going to grab the text tool and click on the canvas over here. I'm just going to write 33.3%. I'm going to make that bold. I'll turn that white. Go back to the select tool and I'll hold control and scale this down a little bit. It's important to hold control while you're scaling it because if you don't, it's going to scale, it's going to make it disproportionate. We don't want that. We want the text to remain in its proportion. So that's why we hold control. And the next thing we'll do is um, I'm going to right click this and go to duplicate. I'll hold control, bring this over here. Right click that and go to duplicate. Hold control, bring that over there. Maybe about that far away. And then I'll hold shift and click on all three of those and make sure they are spaced apart evenly by going to this button right here. Make horizontal gaps between objects equal. And click on that. And then we can group them together with this button here. Group selected objects. Click that. Then hold shift on the keyboard and click on the blue object in the background. And center it on the vertical axis just so that it's all centered up on the page here. And then we can hold shift and click on that blue box to deselect it. And then we can ungroup these. So what we'll do next is let's click off of that to deselect it. Now let's go back to our rectangles tool and let's put a little rectangle going around each of these. So I'm just going to click and drag and draw a little rectangle, maybe about that size. Uh, I'm going to turn the opacity up and I'm going to turn the fill off by clicking the X button. And I'm going to give it a white stroke by holding shift and clicking on the white button. And that'll give that a, sh uh, a white outline called a stroke and we'll go to the stroke style tab and make sure that that's um, let me see how two looks now we'll go with a three-point stroke so we'll just hit three and hit enter go back to the select tool hold shift and click on the number so we can make sure that's centered on the vertical and horizontal axis and then hold shift and click on the number to deselect it and then we'll right click on that box and go to duplicate hold shift click on that number Center that one on the vertical axis. Hold shift, click on the number to deselect it. And then we'll right click that and go to duplicate. And then hold shift and click on the number there and center that on the vertical axis. So we have our three numbers. And what we could do now is click off of the graphic to deselect everything. And I'm going to zoom in now a little bit just by pressing plus on the keyboard. I'm going to zoom in. And then I'm going to grab the Bezier pen. And I'm going to put it right up here in that line. I'm going to click there. I'm going to draw little lines going down to each segment. Click on that. And then hold control and just bring that line straight down until it's in the red portion of that graphic. And then click. And then we can let go of control and just hit enter. And it should create a line. And we want that line to match this box. So we're going to turn that white by holding shift and clicking on the white button. And we'll change the stroke style to a three-point stroke and hit enter. And we'll go to the select tool and hold shift and click on that box just to make sure this is centered. We'll go and center it on the vertical axis. And then we can just click off of it to deselect everything. And let's click on this, just this line right here and right click that and go to duplicate and then right click and go to duplicate again. And then we'll hold shift, click on this box, center that on the vertical axis and then click on this one and then hold shift and click on this box 
and center that on the vertical axis as well. So now we're going to make these two lines go into, we're going to make these lines pointing into their respective segments. So in order to do that, the way I'm going to go about doing that is I'm going to grab a, a horizontal guide up here on your screen. There should be this little, um, these little increments, these little measurements here up, up here. Once you bring your cursor above that, there's going to be a little arrow following around your cursor. Once you're up there, just click and drag and bring it down towards the canvas and it should create a horizontal guide. And I'm going to put that guide maybe right about here in the middle of those lines. And then uh, let's, let's go to our Edit Paths by Nodes tool. Well, actually, let's deselect everything. Clicking this button right here, deselect any selected objects. Click on that, deselect everything. And then we'll go to our Edit Paths by Nodes tool, and let's click on this line right here. And then let's click and drag over that line to select those two nodes. And we'll click this button here to the far left that says Insert New Nodes into Selected Segments. Go ahead and click that, and it should put a new node in there. And then click on this one once, click on it once, and then hold control and click and drag it up until it snaps onto that guide. And then we'll click and drag over these bottom two guides and we'll insert a new node in there as well. And then we'll click and drag over these bottom two nodes right here. And with those two selected, we're going to bring them over here about in the middle where this green part is, but up to where this guide is. We can snap it onto that guide. And then click on just this one once right here, the bottom one. Click on the bottom one, hold control, and click and drag that down into the green segment. And we'll do this again over here. Let's click on this line. Click and drag over both nodes. Insert new node right there. And then click this, just this node once, and then hold control and click and drag this up until it snaps. And then click and drag over these bottom two nodes. Insert new node. And then we'll click and drag over these bottom two nodes right here. And we'll try to just eyeball it up to where the uh, yellow portion is. We want it to be right in there. So we just follow it up maybe about that much until it snaps. And then click on just this bottom one once. And hold control and click and drag this bottom one down until it's into the yellow portion. And then we can press 1 on the, actually we can press one on the keyboard to zoom out. Let's go back to our select tool. Oops. Go back to our select tool. Let's deselect everything with that button and let's hover the cursor over that guideline until it turns red. Once it turns red, just let go of your mouse, press delete on the keyboard to get rid of that. And the next thing we're going to do, the final thing we're going to do is put a little bit of a, a little legend right here, I guess you can call it. We'll go to our uh, create rectangles and squares tool, hold control and shift and just click and drag to create a little square like that. And I'm going to make this the same shade of red that that is. So I'll press F7 to get the dropper. And I'll just click and drag on the, over the part of that segment to make it that color. And I'll turn the white outline off. So I'll, I'll do that by holding shift and clicking this X. Go back to the select tool. We'll right click that and go to duplicate. Hold control and drag that down to here. Right click, duplicate, hold control, drag that down to here. And we'll make sure they're all evenly spaced by clicking and dragging over all three of them. And going down here to where it says make vertical gaps between objects equal. And then we can click off of the graphic to deselect them. And let's click on this middle one right here. We'll press F7 on the keyboard and choose that yellow shade. We'll go back to our select tool, click on this box, F7 and get the dropper, and we'll make this that shade right there. And then we'll go back to our select tool. And what we could do finally is grab one of these numbers right here, right click, duplicate, and let's bring this over here to the right of the, each box. And I'm going to make this a little smaller. I'm just going to hold control and grab one of these arrows and scale that down a little bit. And we'll go to our text tool. And I'm just going to erase that and put some placeholder text in there. I'm just going to write item 1. And we'll go back to our select tool. Hold shift. Click on that box. Make sure we center that on the horizontal axis. Click off of it to deselect. And then we'll click on this. Right click. Duplicate. And then right click. Duplicate again. Hold shift, click on the green box, center that on the horizontal axis, and then click this one. Hold shift, click on the yellow box, center that on the horizontal axis. Then we can click off of it to deselect everything. And finally, we can go to our text tool. And I'm just going to change this. Item 2, click on that one. Item 3. And there you have it. We can click and drag over this whole thing and group it together. And then hold shift and click on our little background there 
center that on the vertical axis. And that is pretty much it. We are done. So that is how you can create that pie chart uh, infographic using Inkscape. So if you have any questions, let me know. And as always, thank you for watching.